I'm Steve. I'm here with Chris in Auburn, California to give you a demo of the MineLab Pro Gold Panning Kit. For those who don't know, Auburn is the heart of the motherload gold country. And we're not far from Sutter's Mill, where gold was first discovered way back in 1848. The Pro Gold Panning Kit has everything you need to get started gold panning. We'll take a look at what's in the kit and then head on down to the river to give you some panning tips. And find some gold while we're at it. You bet. All right. This kit contains two premium gold pans and a classifier, all constructed of a tough UV resistant plastic that floats in water. There's the 15 inch dual riffle pan, the 10 inch single riffle pan, and the hex mesh classifier. There's also a range of useful tools for working with small gold particles, and a carry bag that converts to a backpack. The Pro Gold Kit has three different panning zones to allow you multiple options for different panning techniques. The large 90 degree riffles are useful for separating the bulk of the gravels from the gold. The small riffles are ideal for separating the smaller gold from the small gravel. And the flat side wall is the third zone for separating the fine gold from the black sands. Dark pan colors give a good contrast to yellow gold and blue is the perfect choice, showing both the black sand and the gold very clearly. The Getting Started Guide has some handy tips on where to look for gold and basic steps for getting started. Let's look at the eight steps for finding gold. Step one is to classify your material. So you want to take your hex mesh classifier and place it in the 15 inch gold pan. And bedrock is always the best place to look for gold. If you can find some bedrock and dig down into cracks and crevices where the gold's going to settle, you're going to have your best chance for success. So take the material out of the pocket when you're digging it and fill the classifier up. Step two is to classify your material. Now you can dry classify into a bucket, but it's best if you can do this in the water to wash the material. That way it's completely clean and you have the large rocks separated from the fine material with the classifier. Step three is to fill your gold pan with water. The key here is to find a good safe location with steady footing and a place where you can sit down and be comfortable while you're panning. Step four is a very important step. It's where we're going to agitate the material in the pan to settle the gold into the bottom of the pan. So with the pan in the water, large riffles facing away from you and relatively level, you're not trying to wash material out of the pan here, vigorously shake the pan back and forth to settle the gold into the bottom of the pan. There's a lot of different styles, but most people just simply shake back and forth. And the goal here, again, is not to get the material out of the pan, but to get the gold into the bottom of the pan. Step five is removing the unwanted material from the pan. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but in step four, we got the gold into the bottom of the pan by agitating it. Now we want to wash the light material off the top, and we can do that by simply submerging the pan and raising it and washing carefully the light material off the top. It's a repeated action doing this that eventually removes all the light material from the pan and leaves the gold in the bottom. Now we simply repeat steps three through five over and over until there's very little material left in the pan. So I'm gonna alternately shake the material and then wash across the coarse riffle section. That way if there's any gold in the pan, it'll get captured by the coarse riffles. Now watch carefully to make sure no gold escapes while you're doing this. Agitate, settle the gold, wash, remove the unwanted material. Again, we're doing this across the coarse riffle section. So again, agitate, wash, agitate, wash. We're removing the unwanted material from the pan. Agitating, washing, and again, the coarse riffles here are ensuring that any gold that's in the pan gets caught. And when we get down to a small amount of material like this, it's beneficial to switch over to this other set of riffles, the, the smaller riffles. And if we'd had a large nugget, we would have seen it by now. It would have been caught in the big riffles. Here though, we're gonna switch to the smaller riffles and that'll allow us to clean out, remove those chunkier pieces of rock that are in there. And the final step will be to rotate the last bit of sand over to the fine section here to remove the black sands from the pan. 
In step six, you'll very often have some black sands left in the pan. Black sand is actually magnetite, which is an iron ore, and so you can use a neat trick with the magnet that comes in your Pro Gold panning kit. The magnet inside of a plastic bag, simply run it over the black sands in the pan. You lift the black sand out and leave the gold behind. In step seven, we retrieved the gold from the gold pan using the greatest little tool invented in mining in a long time, the snuffer bottle. It's just like an eyedropper. You squeeze the plastic and release to suck the gold up and capture it in the bottle. It doesn't get any easier than that. In step eight, we finally put the gold in the vial. And we've got a neat little trick for doing that. We'll just take the cap off the vial, take the cap off the suction bottle, pull this tube out, Put the cap back on. Now we have a funnel that we can easily take and put the gold into our vial with. Cap on and we are all done. Well, a few hours effort got us a little bit of gold, Chris. What do you think? Well, I didn't get rich today, but there's still some good gold here and I had a good time. There is still a lot of gold out there to find and the Pro Gold Panning Kit is the perfect way to find it. Contact your nearest Mine Lab dealer for more information on the Pro Gold Panning Kit.